If you're a cyclist, can you get away with the Apple Watch Ultra 2 as your primary tracking device? Actually, I think you can, or maybe you can't. You see, if you're like me, the answer is kind of, sort of, almost. In this video, we're gonna look at the Apple Watch Ultra 2 as it pertains to cycling. We'll look at GPS accuracy, we'll look at what cool new features have been added recently, as well as what I think is missing and what I think is needed before it can become the ultimate cycling tracking device. You see, most cyclists use one of these thingies. This is a, a cycling computer, and it'll track your speed, your distance, your time, your power, and most of these cycling computers will help navigate a route for you using detailed mapping. Now, Apple knows all of this, and they're doing something smart here. As of Watch OS 10, you can actually use your iPhone as a makeshift cycling computer. If you turn on your Apple Watch, and this isn't specific to the Apple Watch Ultra 2, but if you turn on your Apple Watch and you select outdoor cycling activity, you'll get a notification on your phone asking if you wanna mirror the display from your Apple Watch. And I don't actually think that mirroring is the, the right terminology here. Uh, Apple calls it live activity on your iPhone, uh, but maybe we should say it's extending your Apple Watch's activity display because you can actually swipe around to other data screens while you're looking at a different set of data on the watch itself. But if you pause or you split or you stop an activity on either of these devices, the watch or the iPhone, uh, it'll actually pause or stop the activity on the other. It's pretty immediate and it's actually pretty cool. Now watchOS 10 also supports Bluetooth power meters, speed and cadence sensors, and Apple can combine your heart rate data, your power meter data, and some motion data to actually estimate your FTP. So that's your functional threshold power, or about how much power you can theoretically average for an hour if you went absolutely all out. And it's a number that cyclists tend to use a lot. They use it to uh, gauge fitness, build workouts off of, and determine specific training zones. And Apple will also try to estimate those zones for you based on your estimated FTP. Uh, and some of that is editable. Uh, for example, you can edit the number of training zones or zones for power if you would like to within the app. So if you want um, five zones as opposed to six zones, you can do that. Uh, but I should also mention that the estimation of FTP doesn't show up immediately like the first day that you put on your watch. It does take about five uh, decently hard efforts before it'll establish an estimation of FTP for you. Uh, and from what I've seen, uh, from myself and a few other people, it does seem to be estimating FTP values a bit lower uh, than some of the other, maybe more agreed upon protocols for FTP estimations. Uh, again, uh, I think that this is one of those issues that Apple will continue to adjust and refine via software updates you know, as it learns more and more about cyclists using it uh, in this FTP value. Now, a lot of what I've been talking about are features that are specific to Watch OS 10 specifically, uh, which is available from the Apple Watch Series 4 and above. So it's not stuff that's specific to the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Uh, but there are a few unique features to the Apple Watch Ultra series of devices. Uh, for example, the Apple Watch Ultra 1 and the Apple Watch Ultra 2 both have dual band GPS chips, uh, meaning that it can connect to multiple types of satellite systems at the same time to improve the signal. And maybe um, this is more important, but they can actually use some uh, very smart algorithms to discard any questionable data, uh, leaving you with very accurate GPS tracks. And you guys probably don't wanna hear this, uh, but in the past few years of testing, um, it really seems to me that you know, both Apple and Garmin uh, kind of stand above the rest of the industry when it comes to GPS accuracy. Um, the other kicker or the other side of that is uh, that I think it has you know, a lot less to do with this dual band GPS chip and a lot more to do with uh, antenna design and um, in that algorithm that is helping discard bad GPS data. And these algorithms, you know, they're specific to each company, uh, but they are very good at Apple and Garmin currently. Uh, and this data set, um, uh, this data set here was uh, mountain biking trails, 
Uh, I don't think GPS accuracy is nearly as important when you're out riding on the road. Um, maybe it shows you on the wrong side of the road or something like that. Um, but uh, speed, distance, they're all generally gonna be okay unless there's some sort of extreme mistake going on with the GPS data. Uh, but here, while mountain biking, uh, I am seeing extremely accurate GPS data. Again, as you go across the sidewalk here and I switch over to some different trails, uh, I just don't see it missing much here. Uh, but the Apple Watch Ultra 1 and 2 also have something that Apple calls precision start. Uh, most Apple Watches do this kind of countdown thing before it starts a GPS activity. Um, with precision start turned on, it'll show you the basic start screen, and then you can wait for it to actually acquire those GPS satellite signals. And it kind of indicates that with this little blue icon here in the top left, uh, before you actually start the activity. It's something that I would love to see Apple bring to all of their watches. I'm not actually sure what's holding them back from doing it, uh, but for whatever reason, it is currently only on the Apple Watch Ultra 1 and two. And then this Apple Watch Ultra 2 really does have an extremely bright display. Uh, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 has a peak brightness of 3000 nits, or uh, for reference, I would say it's about three times as bright as most of the other watches that I've tested here on this channel. Uh, and that bright AMOLED 1.9 inch square display um, with its 338 pixels per square inch, it is really readable on bright sunny days. So uh, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 will record your distance, it'll record your speed, it'll give you that GPS track, it'll track your heart rate, it'll even record your power and cadence if you have those Bluetooth devices set up and connected. You can track both indoor and outdoor cycling. It can detect if you have a crash and it can alert your emergency contact person. They've even opened up their workout APIs to companies like Training Peaks so you can import workouts. So you could say a pretty much covers anything a cyclist might want, right? Well, I think that there's a percentage of you that probably want more. And I'm gonna highlight three things because um, I feel like those are the three things that kind of come to mind to me, but feel free to chime in in the comment section and let me know if I miss something that's critical to you. Uh, the comment section is right below the like button down there and the subscribe button, just throwing that out there. Uh, but I would say that one of the big things that many of these cycling computers do is mapping, navigating, routing, and rerouting. And you know, some of the, the high-end athletics watches can do this also. And yes, I, I fully understand that the iPhone has mapping, the Apple Watch has mapping, uh, and Apple has even started to make improvements in those regards. Um, for example, Apple announced recently that offline maps with the assistance of your iPhone, uh, so you can actually um, save a location of detailed maps on your phone and you can access that on your Apple Watch. Uh, they are also in the process of introducing topographical maps. Um, it does seem like it's currently very limited at the moment. Uh, depending on when you watch this video, you might only see topographical maps in California park areas. Uh, but you can see that Apple is making progress in this direction. Um, but what they don't have is an easy way to import a cycling route and follow turn-by-turn -turn directions within the Cycling Workout Activity app. So what many of us would love to see is, you know, hey, uh, you've got an upcoming turn here um, while still seeing power details or speed and cadence metrics, for example. And then a lot of those similar cycling navigation functionalities will also tell you if you're off route and they'll even reroute you. Uh, but another thing that I think is missing from the Apple Watch, and I know I'll probably get some pushback on this one, uh, but cycling radar support. I review a ton of cycling products on this channel, uh, and if your cycling computer doesn't support cycling radar, the cycling radar, radar protocol, I, it's kind of like a non-starter for me personally. Now, if you're not familiar with what a cycling radar is, it's just this little device that goes on the back of your bike and it'll tell you when traffic is coming up behind you. It'll tell you uh, how fast cars are approaching, um, how many cars, uh, and generally you know, where those cars are in position to you so that you can kind of get over as far as possible and let cars by. And I know a lot of you guys are like, hey, just use a mirror or um, hey, turn your head around. All good, I, I get that. I'm all for adding anything to the bike that'll help keep you safe 
when you're out, you know, playing in traffic. Uh, but for me personally, you know, if I forget my cycling radar and I head out for a ride, I'll actually turn around, go back home and make sure I have it. Uh, but the last thing that I would want to see from the Apple Watch as far as cycling goes is some sort of climb detail screen. And you know, that's, you know, that's something a little bit more than just like elevation details. The Apple Watch does have that as an option. Uh, I will say that more and more cycling computers are now showing predictive climbing details. So you can just go out for a ride without importing any sort of specific route. If you do hit a big hill and your cycling computer has this feature, it'll tell you information about that hill. And that's information like elevation, uh, distance to the top, uh, maybe a detailed breakdown of the gradients throughout the hill. Um, it really is wonderful having access to all the details of a hill as you're biking it. And while I would say that this is definitely new technology in the cycling computer world, uh, we're definitely at the point now where uh, the Garmin computer has it, the Wahoo cycling computers have it, uh, the Hammerhead Crew computer has it. Uh, to me, it seems like we're at the point now where it's kind of necessary if you wanna be competitive in that cycling marketplace. So. Uh, those are a few things that I hope that Apple is thinking about, uh, maybe considering as they continue to work on cycling on the Apple Watch. Um, that, and of course, I would definitely love to see Apple take a crack at, um, at how to best handle operating a touchscreen when it's rainy and gross out. Uh, but those are just a few of my thoughts. And as always, I'd much rather hear from you guys. Uh, do you use an Apple Watch to track your cycling workouts? Uh, is there anything that you think is missing? Is there something that is glaringly obvious that Apple should add? Uh, either way, uh, Apple Watch or no watch at all, uh, I really do hope that you're getting out there swimming, biking, running, rinsing, and repeating it all over again. And we will see you guys on the next one.